show. So thank you to everybody for your support and for making Hawaii one of the leaders in Scholastic Esports. So give a hand to everybody right now. Great job. Great job. I want to say first uh, as well, I want to say a special thanks to all our partners who are making this possible today. You know, first, let's give a hand to HPU. What a great venue. This is a great place. Good job, HPU. Thank you. Uh, second, I want to say thank you to uh, Zippies. They are going to give complimentary bentos for all the players and coaches today. So thank you for Zippies. All right. That's good. Uh, Hawaii Telecom, they're giving out the grand prize today. They're going to give out a, uh, a GT racing uh, gaming chair along with an Xbox. So thank you, Hawaii Telecom, for the, giving us the fastest internet in the state. Yeah, let's go. Woo! All right, another special thanks to Aloha Pacific Federal Credit Union. They're going to be giving away uh, a number of prizes. If you have not filled out a white card, in, uh, in the registration booth, do so. They're giving out prizes. They also give out scholarships and they have one of the best savings rates on island. So let's give it a hand to the Low Pacific Federal Credit Union. They'll be doing a uh, lunch and learn by, you know, just so you guys know, at lunchtime, uh, they're doing a financial seminar. So how to actually get scholarships, how to actually save money so you can pay for school. So for the families, it might be worth just sticking around during lunchtime. All right, next, I want to say thank you to Mobile IT Force. You know, for their assistance in providing IT assistance and affordable technology for schools. Give it up. And then I would also like to give special thanks to PC Gamers. They're providing custom PCs, really state-of-the-art type of stuff, equipment. So if you're looking to, like, raise your game for eSports, check out PC Gamers. Let's give it a hand. All right. All right. And lastly, I want to give special thanks to Alelo and, of course, Esports U for the help with the uh, production and the media today. Can't do it without you guys. Thank you so much. All right. All right. So uh, a couple of housekeeping uh, items today. So we're going to do a number of events, all right, like 10 game titles. In addition to that, we're having an open Tetris tournament. All ages can compete. If you don't know, Tetris is headquartered here in Hawaii. So they are actually providing exclusive prizing for the first two winners. So go on the mobile phone, find a free PC, go to Tetris.com, and just take a screenshot of your scores. We'll take a look, and uh, we'll actually put them on the leaderboard, and then around 2, 3 o'clock, we'll, uh, we'll announce the winners. But I think you got like a Tetris flotation device and maybe some other type of cool item. Something original is worth checking it out. So, and then also we have a lunch and learn, like I said, at lunchtime. We also have a signing for HPU. So this is a really unique idea, um, you know, uh, activation. So one of the college, uh, one of the high school kids actually got a scholarship and is actually gonna do official signing today. So it's really cool. It's really special for Hawaii. So really excited to see that. And that will be around lunchtime. Okay, uh, and lastly, we're gonna have a number of raffles today. So make sure you get your raffle ticket. If you would like to get more raffle tickets, uh, go to the Hawaii Telecom uh, booth and you know uh, uh, follow their, um, their social media app. Okay, I've talked long enough. Let's begin. Thank you all very much. All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Hawaii Esports League Spring 2024 Championship. We're starting off the day with, of course, some League of Legends finals. I'm Professor Layton, of course. This is Henry. We're in for a treat today, Henry. Yeah, and I feel like League of Legends is one of the hardest things to do in the morning. It's like <laughs> 8 a.m. math class kind of feel, but you, you know that, I, of course. Yeah, of course, of course. But, you know, these students have to go through it, and they're going to have to showcase what the top-tier talent here mm -hmm. looks like at the high school scene for Hawaii. And I'm honestly excited, you know? We've got one remote team in Baldwin, yeah. and McKinley will be also be up here on stage. I don't think we've ever seen a McKinley Finals, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not too sure either. Um, my memory isn't that good anymore, so it yeah. might be. I'm not 100% too sure. But yeah, it's going to be a good game, though. Of course, on the side, McKinley's still also playing in the semifinals, I believe, for Overwatch against Roosevelt right now, to your right. Ooh. So a lot of McKinley in the house right now, competing in a lot of titles today. Okay. But of course, League of Legends is the one we want to focus on. It is going to be a best of three for this grand finals. Yes. And it's going to be a long... League of Legends is not a short game, for sure. Like At least 20 to 40 minutes per game. 
Yeah, and it really depends on the decisiveness of the teams when they make a decision. Yeah. We've seen like the top tier teams, as soon as a fight is won, you would think, oh, let's go Baron and then let's slow push out the three lanes. Some teams are really good at recognizing the, oh, we can just end the game here. Yeah. We don't need to go and wrap around and make this like a smooth sailing situation. And if the teams today in the finals can make that executive decision, we could see 20 minute games, like pre 25 minute finish before your third item kind of game. Yeah. But we'll see. It's a possibility. We'll it's a yeah. possibility. And we talked a little bit before about the, the current meta, especially for League of Legends. Right now in the bot lane, you see a lot of these Nautilus as support and Jinx yes. being the hyper carry, Zeri in the hyper carry position. So a lot more hyper carry AD carries while mid jungle and top, you can just do whatever the heck you want now. You see a lot of Darius's, Poppy's coming on the jungle, Ari, Huey, a lot of different type of mid laners as well popping up. Yeah, I feel like mid lane has started to rotate into more of the utility once again. Yeah. The Ari, the Huey, the Oriana. Syndra is popping expect. up still. There's still the Malignance champions, obviously, uh, right? Uh, I know, I know. Breathe. Cassidy, Corky, Karma. Those will still be seen occasionally. Top lane, pretty carry heavy, I would say. Yep. Sante, I'm going to say is a carry. Is... Darius, Aatrox, right? Oh, the Aatrox, especially, you know, T1 Zayas last year at Worlds. Oh, Absolutely. So good. And bot lane, your traditional hyper carry, make sure that they yeah. scale. But of course, if that decision making leads to those 25 minute wins, the ADC will either have snowballed to the point where 25 minutes is enough, or it becomes or... like a solo QA to carry at 0 10. Oh, we, we've seen we, we, fair we've share seen our fair share of those. I've been my fair share of those. <laughs> uh, rest in peace, Senna. Or is she back? She's okay. She's okay? She's okay. So, teams, you can lock in Senna. Henry will root for you, 100%. I will be so happy. And But that if you int on Senna, he, he will not be happy. I will yell at you after. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely t combinations. Like, we mentioned Nautilus is very prevalent, with, especially with Jinx and oh, yeah. Zeri. But we also got to talk about some of these enchanters in the bot lanes. Melio, Lulu, Janna, especially working with things like the Lucian, the Ophelios. You know, especially the, even the Caitlyn popping up back again as well. Which is a double range bot lane, Ash and Caitlyn coming together as a, as a duo. So possibly is there so I want to do what I definitely want to see how, what kind of bot lanes we do see today the more of the hyper carries or more of the utility pokes kind of style absolutely hyper carry you would think it's slow and steady yeah but there's also the temple lanes that you could totally play oh yeah with. Aphelios Melio you don't really think of as a temple lane but just because of the utility that Aphelios's weapons have mm -hmm. it does mean that you can push that lane aggression I'm glad you mentioned the enchantresses because Lucian Nami is something that people have Melio's been still a thing trying as well. over and over again success varies quite yeah. a bit but I think because we have the team synergies built in here they've made it to the finals so they yeah. obviously got something to prove Lucian, Nami, Lucian, Milio could take over lanes. It could take over, especially with Lucian opting in more for the Ignite or the Exhaust, and especially ex instead of the Ghost or, or the cleanse. Heal as Cleanse. Yeah, especially, oh, I forget some Morgana Ash, and you should probably take Cleanse. But definitely Ignite, you're a lot more aggressive, especially with Lucian being able to, pretty much, if, if Nami decides to roam, Lucian is one of the eight characters that is able to solo by himself in the bot lane, as long as it's not against... Something that could probably kill a 1v1, like the Ophelios, post level 6, or, or the Draven. Or the Draven is something that we have been seeing slowly start to creep so, up. So what you're saying is we might see Draven today. Okay. We might see a okay. Draven today. Draven I, is good into yeah. Jinx. Draven's good into Lucian. Especially if you get Emilio with that Draven, that extra range, very deceptive for an axe. Yeah, and I got to I take a look at the ELOs before as well. Definitely like Platt and the um, Emerald ELO okay. for these teams. So That's very even are. teams. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you're sort of you're like the upper echelon as well. A little that, bit, yeah, yeah. 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 So as far as our good friend half Cole, that's a different story. Um, we, we don't talk about that guy. <laughs> so I want to see what these players pick. I didn't get a chance to see uh, what they pick, but here are the teams. Yeah, we have <laughs> empty chairs for Baldwin. I love They're that. They're playing remotely. They're playing remote. You know, we should have some like like teddy bears or like like Tibbers in there, really, or you know, um, something like that. Oh, like 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 what they did during the pandemic for the, yeah, the, the LCS, arenas. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. See. Like LCS, they okay. have like like little like stick figures with their like okay. faces, like Photoshop yeah, on top of yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And then on the right, of course, you see McKinley High School, of course. Uh, I'm not sure what the sides are for this lobby. You see, see the walk on the left. That was the, I believe, uh, McKinley head coach. So oh. definitely supporting all of his kids today in a multitude of different titles. What's it? McKinley is blue sides, what we learned. So they oh. opted for blue sides. So okay. they get the first pick in this opportunity. And I, I do like getting first pick, especially you had that prior if you want to go for something like the Malignant's Karma or Oriana versus, yes. like you mentioned, especially with these Malignant's champions, they have a lot more higher priority in this current meta. Oriana can work so well with a multitude of different junglers along with the team compositions, along with, of course, Karma being Karma. Enough said, I hate the champion, but it's really good. <laughs> I think you're just mad. I think I'm, you just gotta I, play I, a little bit better. No, no, no. Listen, buddy. Malignance is, malignance is a problem, for sure. But 
I think the one strength of blue side, like you mentioned, is going to be that top prior pick for B1. But there's just so many good things right now that it's so hard to just dish yeah. it out. Oh, actually, I, I think McKinney wasn't the... I, I do remember some of these names. I remember Ross Kane. I remember Tesla Spirit. I remember all the... Oh, wait, are these right names, actually? These are not the right names. These so are not the we're right gonna names. We're going to update just this case. Yeah, we'll change the names momentarily, but let's get the picks. But those so, are the right schools. <laughs> those are the right schools. And they're playing on oh, the right anyway, side. So Sion being banned out, so I'm not sure if that, that, that shows it's going to be like... Um, top lane, side, mid lane. Sion is a champion that can go in a multitude of different lanes and roles while Graze. So targeting towards the jungler, especially in this current meta. Carry junglers can be a threat with the Kane, with the Graves, the Ego as well being very prominent in the, in the tier 1 scene. Yeah, and the ones that you listed, those are just the AD ones, right? We've seen Nuclear Gragas, we've seen Lu oh, Nuclear God. Diana, things like that. No, the Lulu ban. <laughs> I mean, it's just so good right now. It's with, so good. With every hyper carry ADC. <laughs> You could make it work with Lucian, just because of the fact that the picks procs for both so, auto attacks. With the, that duel name be Lulu Lucian? Lulu Lulu. <laughs> oh god. By the way, look at the rest of the band. Skarner being Ooh. banned. Of course, Skarner is allowed now. It has been over two weeks of being allowed in competitive play. That means yeah. it is allowed, of course, in the Vanta League finals. Skarner, very volatile, especially in the jungle, but even in support as well, especially with these more immobile 80 carries in the Jinx, in the Ash. So able to get on top of them. So very smart. And banning the Vagar, of course, the baby cage. Yeah. Makes it go baby rage. It's very, very useful. There's not a lot of champions with unstoppables. I mean, you took the Scion out already. <laughs> so I think, what, Malphite, Orn, Cassante, and that's pretty much it. There's not really that many. So since the Cassante comes out of nowhere, we're playing that one um, uh, Showmaker gif, right? I'll act it out. Oh, okay. Just don't punch the monitor, please. We need that. <laughs> we need that. I gotta threaten the monitor. That's what he does, too. And of course, first pick will be the Morgana. We're not too sure if that's gonna be a jungle position or the support. We mentioned it as well. It sort of forces the 80 carries to get, go that cleanse route if they want to. If not, you have to hope your, your support goes for that instead. I will say, though, Morgana is a pretty good answer to the Malignant's champions that we've True. been seeing. Just because of that magic shield preventing so much damage um, from going over. Oh. But when you pick blue side, that B1 is really good, but that allows R1, R2 to be picked immediately, and yeah. that is going to be the bot lane decided here for the side of Baldwin. Jinx, Alistair, very good combination. Now it's going to be in McKinley's hands. How are they going to use this Morgana? Who's going to get the Black Shield when a four-man pulverize happens? It's very interesting, especially for your laning phase. Um, Alistar does not have a good time against Morgana, especially if you try to go for combination. It, it, it instant, you know, bind, and you can't do much, especially with a character like Varus who gets stacks, you know, stack on and, and get, you know, the, the, the W passive on, and you just use the piercing arrow. That's going to go to like half your health rate, especially early on before you get armor. So very interesting pick for under Alistar. While we do see the Yone and Katarina getting picked, not just sure if that is going to be a Yone top lane or mid. I'm assuming True. it could be a, a Katarina versus Yone matchup, which battles sort of the assassin champions in mid lane potentially. Yeah, and Katarina Shunpo can make it so you can sneakily dodge the Yone ult right before they cast it if you E right behind them. Something to keep in mind. I do want to point out, Varus is a very good pick early on just because you have so many options on how to build that AP or AD. Or you can build yeah. AP, ABD, Lethality Rit. on hit. There's a lot of... Exactly. So God. it really depends on what you want the I rest of your team to look like. <laughs> if you... Now, remember, the sub runes don't have the armor rune or the MR rune. That's right. Which means magic damage is so much stronger in that bot lane. If you choose to go double AP with the Varus and the Morgana... And we see a lot of jungle bans with the Karthus Echo, while opposite side, target towards bot the top lane bans, the Kled, rest so in peace. Sad. You're sad about that. So Trindamir, and of course, Kane being locked. We talked wow. about the sort of aggressive junglers, the sort of hyper carry potential, the one-shot potential. So we want to see if this goes for the blue Kane or the red Kane. So, do you, uh, actually, I have a question for you. Is Katarina a, the AD Katarina build still a thing, or did they nerf it? Yes, yet? it's still very good. Still very it's good. Still I know Colin can do good. it, Katarina can do it. So, that's still going to be probably. So, is it possible we might see that, but probably not, especially with how we see double ADs already locked in for Baldwin. Upside, though, Mordekaiser and Kha'Zix. We talk about the hyper aggressive junglers. We didn't mention Kha'Zix, who's, who is the OG hyper aggressive. Absolutely. Kha'Zix Rangar, you know, the, the, the pair releases from way back when. Ka but. Mordekaiser recently got a buff mm. where you cannot QSS the ultimate. That is true. So, <laughs> yes, you have this really aggressive front line, but these are, these are um, what's it called? These assassin champions don't really buy space. They're not warden champions. They're straight up go-ins, which yeah. means if the Mordekaiser can just walk past those assassin uh, the assassin line and ult the Jinx, 
that could be very bad news bears for the side of Baldwin. That being said, they do have a very rounded composition that oh, yeah. allows for a little bit of peel. We're just going to have to see how that plays out. Yeah, especially looking at the top lane, especially with Renekton versus Mordekaiser. You mentioned Mordekaiser a bit, but Renekton, especially with the shield coming in on top of Mordekaiser, with the W on Renekton, you're able to sort of take away that really fat shield that Mordekaiser can acquire. So Renekton, a really good overall pick, especially against champions that have that shield, extra shield, like the Yone, like yep. the Mordekaiser. The Morgana, Morgana show doesn't give extra health, does it? No, it just, no, it, just, it, it just does extra... give extra MR health. Correct. Okay, got it. Thanks, thank you for yes. that. But yeah, definitely laning phase early on. I do want to give it out to McKinley. Very strong bot lane early on. Varus and the Morgana. Oh, yes. But like you mentioned in the, the Yone too. The Yone too. But in the team fight, so you have to keep an eye on this Alasar. See how you can get in the position either in the front or going for those flank plays. We've seen in tier one, like players like Mickey X going for the flanks throughout vision. So if you are McKinley, make sure you have excellent vision to make sure that this Alistar can't get behind you, or this king can't get behind you with, you know, with the shadow travel. Yeah, and there's not a lot of AoE on the side of Baldwin except for this Alistar, so they're going to be banking on those teamfights quite a bit. There's nothing saying that the Mordekaiser couldn't catch this Alistar on the flank and ult him instead. Because then that would mean there's not a lot of engage left on the side of Baldwin, and they're going to have to deal with it. But we are heading into the game now. Game number one... McKinley versus Baldwin. McKinley on the blue side, Baldwin on the red. We're going to have to see how they choose to set up here. Game number one is always a really interesting one, just because you can choose to play it out with a little bit of cheese in the early game or just set up and make sure that everybody is staying safe and secured. It looks like that's what's going to be happening here. Rui Z trying to go in. Does spot out the cane, blocking a little bit here, but... Nothing going to be done. No wards going to be placed either from both sides, so they're not going to have too much information. Baldwin immediately pinging the enemy fountain. I think that's the sign that they want to go for the Nexus as soon as possible. We're going to have to see how that gameplay works out. But yeah, no sneaky interventions going on for either side. No wards being placed. They did see the cane, so they are aware of where Baldwin's jungler is going to be starting. But they're not too sure about that Kha'Zix instead. Gonna have to see how the lanes walk in, how they position themselves, but yeah, pretty tame early game here. Yeah, pretty tame early game indeed. I'm not sure what character's the Kha'Zix name is, but um, we'll, 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 fi we'll figure it out eventually. We'll figure it out eventually. Do you think they're Korean, Japanese, or Chinese? Because those are the three like character types that they can't read. Oh, oh, I saw you looking uh, over there. I, I was trying, I'll be wise. honest. Um, I'm going to say Korean. Remember, okay. it's League of Legends. It, when they're Korean, they're always better. Oh. As we see bot lane already, though, we do see, I believe, I'm going to call them Clown. Hmm. Like, it's Clown backwards. I'm going to call them that. Clown get chunked out early on, especially, like you mentioned, the, the Varus, the Morgana, and that is... Uh, those are Chinese Those characters. are Chinese. Okay, yeah. so are you ready for them? I'm not going to read them because I have no idea what they said. Okay, fair enough. As Rage Axe and Silas Too Sexy looking, the binding goes on, but level 2 should be acquired by the Silas, Silas and Rage first. But going to no binding at the current moment. Top side though, we do see the cane already there looking to see if we can get an invader, maybe even a gank up in top side, Henry. Hugging the right, uh, the left side of that wall, I should say. Maybe trying to see if they could do an invade, but again, they don't know which side the Kha'Zix started on, so there's no guarantee that there is camps waiting for him on that top side. With this uh, lane being in the even state on the top side, they're not going to try to go for yeah. anything. Just play it safe, reset as soon as you can, get that long sword purchase. Junglers have a really good 1,000 gold checkpoint that they can do right here. It's going to be either be the Serrated Dirk for mm -hmm. both of them, and hitting that first to like, propel your jungle clear a little bit faster is going to be very important. Yeah, and of course, while we have this downtime, I do want to give a special big shout out to our longtime partner, Hawaiian Telecom. If you're looking for the best lag free game experience, especially with a game like League of Legends, you want that lag free game experience, we definitely recommend going over to their booth located behind us and ask about their bundle deal with High Optics Internet with sub 60 ping to the West Coast server. Sub-60 ping. That's, That's pretty crazy. good. Hawaiian Telecom is your edge to guarantee you're racking up those wins any online game. So check it out and get some of the best lag-free gaming. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of pings happening on this bot side. They can see the kerfuffles. Katarina gone missing for a little bit. Both junglers are now going to encounter each other. Yeah, go ahead. McKinley's going to have first roam, but it doesn't matter because Tryhard already took the Scuttle Crab. So they're saying they're going to battle for top Scuttle now. That is the next point of contention, though. 
But yeah, just it's just a, a slow city farming game. They know it's the final, so they want to make sure that they are able to get you know as much momentum as possible. If you win game one, there's a lot of you know relief in you as well as momentum gain. You know, a lot of adrenaline in you. Finding this line on top of this and a lot of root coming into place. The traps weren't. Or not wasn't a trap. Sorry, I think wrong sides. But definitely a lot of damage early on. But yes. a lot of mana being used by Rage early on with these bind with these with these puddles. And top lane is it's just a farm test as always. Yeah, I think Rager took a um, mana flow band. You usually mm. see Morganas, they can either go for the Glacial or they can go for the um, the Comet. This one opted in for the Comet, probably just to cycle that mana. Very good steal from Tryhard there, making sure that he defends his own territory. Yone coming in, but it's just going to be a little bit of poke damage. No level 6 is available. Actually, I, th I think... Yeah, Tryhard did get that, right? Yes. Because yeah, I believe... He got the big one. Yeah, it's because... Kha'Zix... I'm not going to say try to save him. Kha'Zix was... I think Smite is early. I think it was 14 health at the end there. Mm. I think it was 14 health. So he Smite is at 614. And it's not an upgrade to Smite just yet, though. Right, right. Unfortunately. It's still very early. But you can see, right, because the uh, Kane opted in for that long sword back, that's three camp difference already in yeah. the jungle position. So very strong lead, and this can propel a little bit further. This could be the serrated Dirk back for the Kane right now. Try hard. We're going to have to see what it gets. Yeah, potentially. We've seen the opposite on the bot lane, though. We see the recurve bolt already for the Varus. Well, I believe opting towards that Kraken for yep. that Jinx is my assumption. And like you mentioned, straight to Dirk, so definitely getting a lot more of the potential damage, especially with a squishy targets like the Varus, like the Morgana. When your W lands for the slow, it enables both you and Allstar to do more damage and get in on top of them. So I want to see when it starts to finally go bot lane, because you want to make sure that this Varus doesn't get ahead early, because we don't, like we mentioned, we don't know exactly what build Varus is going just yet, but liking Varus can be a menace, can be a problem. And of course, control of that dot bush is so important. Absolutely. We do see Varus with the Lethal Temple, but hold on, Tryhard's going in for a gank. That's going to be the ultimate for both mid laners here. Exit coming oh, out, no. but he has to snap back. Flash is out, Q3. It's going to be enough space, but Flash follow ignites to come. That's going to be first blood for the Katarina, and it's going to be traded back by the Kha'Zix. Kane does land the slow, is going to have to invest the Flash on the side of McKinley. Many resources used, but it's a one-for-one one trade. First blood, though, going over to the side of the Tigers. Yeah, and this is... Oh, <laughs> that's unfortunate, the, the hitable power rights combination. But that was one of the reasons why Katarina went for that exhaust in this lane compared to, like, the Ignite or the Teleport. Because, you know, you only when they get ahead, and especially on top of you, with the ultimate as well as all the abilities, getting exhaust to make sure they can't do any more of those that burst damage is so important. Yeah, and the thing that a lot of people forget about when playing against Yone is you actually take double damage in a sense yeah. when he's in his um when he's in his uh, shadow form just because you take the damage initially and then when he snaps back you also take another bit of damage based on the amount you took when he was not in his uh, yeah. in his main form. So having that exhaust, you're really double negating the damage, which is super super useful. I know you proposed the Kraken Slayer for the Varus. I've always... Oh, sorry, no, Kraken for Jinx. Sorry, that's not Oh, I for Jinx. Okay, I, I... okay, same thing. I have thought always that Kraken was the better item, but I've been noticing a lot of Hyper Carries transition to the Static Shiv, actually. True, actually. Just for the Wave Clear priority. Nerf, by the way. Yeah. Nerf, by the way. Still, still a thing. But yeah, I definitely, I agree with you, especially characters like the Zara, like the Jinx, they opt for that Static Shiv, just because, like you mentioned, better Wave Clear, especially with characters that, you know, in order to Wave Clear more, you have to use your abilities, so having to just auto-attack to Wave Clear is yep. so much better for them, especially with Jinx, and you want to have enough mana for your Rocket form, just because it'll do so much more damage in these critical team fights. as we do see the Kane behind Tryhard, got level 6, this spot out by the ward. Spotted by the Tri-Bush. Already took down the Alistair, though. So, going into a numbers disadvantage. Silas too sexy is going to get tagged by the Zap. Has to flash away from the Kane, who has his ultimate available. Umbo Trespass is going to be in a 550 gold over to the jungle. And make that a double kill on the side of Baldwin. Double kill indeed. It looks like a lot of utility was used by Silas is sexy. You know, using that ghost early on, along with the chains to try and get them down. You know, double root bot lane pretty much. But on the top side though, since he did get that drag, now they're getting dragged along with that double kill. It's in a B. Um, Kha'Zix as well as Dark Ghost getting you know edit and Eddie. Yep. I don't know if these kids are old enough to know edit and Eddie is. I don't think so. Should we say Powerpuff Girls maybe? They might not know that one either. Huh. We'll think about this as we progress, but I know, you're going through your 90s trauma right about now. What, what, what would kids know that is a, a, a trio that... That's a good trio that they would know. 
I'll have to get back to you. I'll okay. be, I'll actively be thinking okay, about Okay, but this. a pulverize. And this should just be a dead rage here. They do flash out. Actually, they, they get oh. out. Uh, the Superman Death Rocket goes wide. Not accounting for the flash. But, yeah. you know, flash is a big investment, so now you're going to be down that <laughs> in four or five minutes. Rage, stop playing, stop playing with fire right now. You, you, they're asking. <laughs> to say, hey, look oh, at yeah. me. I'm vibing. But it's going to be a reset, though, from the AD carry and the jungler. Looks like Alistar is staying to get some EXP, you know, get some gold in their own pocket. But let's see. Pickaxe built up for this Varus. So, yeah, definitely. That is for... What item is that first? This is... Both still probably looking like... Well, actually, Pickaxe doesn't build it. This could be a Bork first Varus. I was say, this may be a Bork. That's interesting. Look, I honestly... I think that's a smart idea. Especially what you're going against with this Katarina. With this, you know... Kane. It's, yeah. It is a blue form Kane. It is a blue form Kane. Yomu's already completed, so you could already... You saw him earlier just dashing Speedy across Speedy Gonzalez. Very, very fast. This is why the ghost was taken. This virus is scared for his life already. <laughs> He's going to be speed. He's going to be running away fast. Especially with the Black Shield. Hopefully helping him out. He doesn't get slowed by any of these abilities. But yeah, already chunked down is still Rage. I don't think Rage has backed yet, actually. Yeah. Rage is pl definitely playing with their food. So we'll see what happens. Already... I believe looking either for Leandris or maybe even go for that wildlife start that we see some, Ooh. especially with Alistar, Kane. Right. Okay, you want to slow them down a little bit more with the wildlife, but said it's going to be Leandris going for that mask first item. Okay. Like we mentioned, and Varys opting for the boots. You see the gold economy so far, Henry. Definitely heavily in favor of you know the rest side. At least for the top side, it is going to be the red team in favor in the top jungle, but. Just Varus and Yone with the farm differential. You know, 25 or 23 CS in favor of this Yone. Doing a good, a very good job of zoning out this Katarina with their abilities. Of course, it's Yone. You don't use mana. So yep. you're just trying to poke them out as much as possible. Katarina too, but you're, you have a lot less abilities that are more range as compared to the Yone. Yeah. And one of the things we don't really talk about is both of these champions don't have mana, but oh. as I hold that thought, Alistair, taking a heck of a lot of damage, does have to use the ult as a means of staying alive. Has to use the flash on top of that, but they might look for a re-engage here. They pushed in the wave. Anything mm. to come from it, it is going to be the Jinx left alone! They just walk past the axis, that's going to be the um, oh God, binding! Okay. Traded one for one. That's though. not bad though. One for one, you did get yeah. a return kill though. And Morgana tanked a little bit too much. Well, you should have probably flashed earlier. As oh, oh, that that is so dirty. That That's is so dirty, Colton. That's zooming on the wards. They know. But yeah, uh, and then top lane though, uh, they are gonna be in the shadow, running a lot of damage. Actually, now they're in the shadow. I'm sorry. Yep. That's a lot of damage there. Cause might get caught out by this king, but here comes Yone. Yone is in the vicinity. It is a three v two. Remember, your ADC is down on the side of Baldwin. Katarina skirting around, but yeah, the Death Realm claims flash. another! Double flash coming in in the top lane. We're gonna try to flash out, but the flash Q coming in as... Spinning to win! You know, he's a Beyblade, but not enough to kill just yet. Actually, I, I was gonna ask you, um, so, like you mentioned, the cleanse not able to do Mordekaiser ult anymore. Would Alistar ult be able to get out of Mordekaiser ult still, or no? No. Not anymore? It is impossible to leave Okay, now. got it, yeah. I had to clarify that one. Speaking of Mordekaiser, it is a good spot, though. Kane can't really do much against Mordekaiser, she with, you know, the play is still Captain Upset, you already countered. Absolutely. I mean, Renekton isn't big of a damage dealer early anyway. You're mostly here for your Dominus Q, uh, W stun and then you kind of single somebody out. It's you're just a really good health bar because you can call the meek and then do a lot of healing that yeah. way. But yeah, good front line. Gonna need to take a little bit longer to get into that action though. We have been seeing a lot of bot lane focus, but this is now going to transition to the grubs. Oh, look at the damage with the, with the solo, um, you know, with the passive coming in from Kazi. There's so much damage, but the ultimate... going to be fate sealed, going to land onto two, immediately takes out the jungler, which means there's no smite available. Kazix is very low, has so to heal grubs. back up, though, and they're just going to back away. This is super important because we already saw McKinley. They have three grubs. You only need the fourth one to summon the little Five. void might. Isn't it five or is it four? It's four now. It, they, they they made it four. They made it four. I now. never knew that. Okay. So yeah, you only need one more on the side well, of McKinley, which is why they're fighting so hard for McKinley it. McKinley did decide to go back to a cause is there. And there's one, so like you mentioned, but if they do get six, they get I believe double the amount, yes. correct? Yes. 
Got it's it. now six for two, same thing as before. And four and five is one. Okay, got four it. Four and five it. is one. Good to yeah. know. And of course, Dragon is spawning soon. It is going to be the Ocean Drake. So no Ocean Soul, no Mountain Soul for this map. But five grubs now for this Cogs for McKinley. And that is going to be the six of them. Especially with characters like Yone and Varus who are able to auto-attack very fast on turrets. Having those extra grubs be so useful. As now Cogs is... Uh, sorry, Kane looking to do something in the bot lane. I believe they, they get spotted briefly by that control ward there. Yeah, and funnily enough, um, the Rift Herald just spawned. Oh yeah, it's 14 minutes. Because yeah. it's 14 minutes. Yeah. So they barely took those grubs. They're going to get Rift Herald. If McKinley lands this Rift Herald, that's a six grub charge onto a turret. That's which disgusting. Is so much. But you can see the focus right now is going to be on this bottom side. The dragon stacking happening on the side of ball. When they're going to get the mountain, they're going to get the cloud. We're going to get an Infernal Ooh. Soul to start off this finals. Game number one. Set fire to the rain. So you're it's seeing it. already pretty obvious priorities for both junglers. Oh. The top side going to be for this Kha'Zix. Here comes Kane, though, looking. He does spot out the Heaven Hell game taken. Ignite's available. He can't he steal it. Ooh. A little too slow on that one. Close. It was very close. A very early smite coming in from the Kha'Zix, but he has that, you know, passive to solo and he does a lot more yeah. damage. He had to smite Q. He wanted to prioritize it together, but it just... The Kane was too close. It was yeah. a little bit worrying. But you can look at this. Prior to the plates falling, Yoni took the mid tower down to about the two plate range. This turret in the bot side already is about the two plate range. Both could fall to that arrow charge initial, and so we're gonna have to see where it gets used up. But you can see the void mites already coming in, and Tryhard might look to make a play. Ooh, I just realized with this little extra movement speed boost from the Infernal Soul, especially with the little with the cinders. Cinders, it's gonna be very useful for Kane to move around the map. It's about That's also with Cosmic as well. So both junglers, well, you probably see them like, getting all these cinders. So I want to see how many cinders junglers get before they get into a fight. Top lane, uh, both of them have Conqueror, so you'll see a little, little skirmishes every now and yep. then. But as we mentioned, Mordekaiser that has the ability to regen a lot of the health. But same with Renekton, so it's a battle of sustained top lane, really. But looking at the rest of the items, double, you, you almost are both junglers. And a Lich Bane first item for this Katarina. Yeah, the on-hit effects like we were talking yeah. about does work AP, if you think about it. Uh, Speaking of working, Tryhard going in for a gank, doesn't know that the Kha'Zix is here. Is going to get oh my immediately God. bursted out. Yomu's revenge right here. And more, and the Alistair has to proc the ult just to stay alive. Is it even coming. enough? That's going to be the arrow coming, piercing, true to his name. Double kill though, but the clean oh. here is going to be beautiful. Baldwin K answers immediately. Katarina, you know, this Katarina triple kill instantly. We saw the possibility. They knew what was going to happen, especially with, you know, all those little health bars. You know, they had to dive so hard for that Jinx mid lane. Maybe a potential another 1v1. Fate Seal coming in. Katarina should be fine. Yeah, it does have to blink out of there. Ignite made it a little bit dicey, but try. Oh. Tryhard's already back in if the If that vicinity. W landed, that might oh, have yeah. been a potential. You, oh, yeah. you, <laughs> we're about to try to gas you and, you, and you missed the Q over the wall. Um, but anyway, and it might be a possibility of Katarina jumping back on top of Kane to try and get another kill, especially Ultimate being such a low cooldown. Exhaust is up as well versus Katarina. You know, look, look what he bought. He bought... A, he, he's already getting so much AP in his pocket. I want to see once the item's complete, how much AP he'll have already, especially with six stacks on his Dark Seal. This is building up more and more. I will say, obviously you can go because you're an assassin, you can go for the Shadow Flame, you can go for the Void yeah. Staff. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing a Rift Maker on this Katarina, Ooh. just because when you're going in front line kind of all by yourself, if the Renekton's not, you know, looking for a flank or something, you kind of want to stay a little bit healthy. Riftmaker gives you health, but also gives you Omni Van. You, you remember back in the day when it was um, Heartsteel Katarina? Oh my goodness. Yeah. We still see Heartsteel Akali's in our ARAMs, man. True. <laughs> Actually, funny enough, I got this one um, arena, I got this one augment where uh, you get quadruple the amount of Heartsteel you have. So I had a, almost a 50k health swing. I'm gonna do that on Senna. Alright, anyway, top lane, the turret gets taken. Shadow Realm for this guy. Here comes uh, Tokyo Drift. Okay, yeah, uses the Rift Herald to enter the fight a little bit early, but that's going to waste the charge. Good flash away from Cash, going to stay alive for the time being. He does have one slice, oh. no dice. Does and stun up the Cossacks, but he's just gonna get. He gets a new pair of Crocodile boots there. Crocodile Dundee, mid lane tryhard. Uh, living up to his name, gets a kill on top of Rage there. <laughs> the crab. The crab oh. as somehow, someway, bot lane, Yone beats Katarina. The 4-1 and 0 now, 4-2 and 0. And this 
It's a 60 CS lead for this Yoni. Has a Kraken, has been sitting on that Crick Cloak and the Pickaxe for a while. Yeah, and I believe with this turret getting taken, that's going to be another charge. Oh, oh, he oh. drifts it beautifully, though. Y you know what that was? That was a Hawaiian Telecom, um, you know, right there. That was, was the ping advantage. That was a Hawaiian Telecom You're ping advantage. You're so right. You're mm -hmm. actually so right. Love that for him. Yeah, and also I like this. We mentioned the shields coming into play with you know, the Yone, with the Morkaiser, with the Morgana, and look what this Kane has. Wow, I've never seen that item. Nobody builds that. You're not wrong. They don't. Well, this is like a double enchanter comp with like a Lulu and an Ivern. You don't really see it as much, but I still think nobody builds that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised the I'm surprised the Baldwin player knows about this item, because <laughs> I I basically <laughs> forgot about it. But I think I think Serpent's Fang is a very good pickup here. The cane is still moderately ahead, and the yeah. damage that you're about to do, you know, on top of the fact that you can ne negate a Ooh. lot of the shields. And yeah, you can already see two items coming in, but speaking of That's getting dirty. caught... That's dirty. You know, they, they had the invisibility there with the ultimate along with the wards and instantly binding. That's uh, just a uh, Decaterina. 4-3-0 and zero now. Looking at a small skirmish in this jungle, but not up to do anything just yet. Kane wants to do the Grom. Maybe trying to look to see if they can do anything on the dragon, but not just yet, especially with the piercing arrow with the stacks. Oh. You know, there goes the ultimate. A little bit too late there. It was decent timing. Yeah, though. but yeah. like we mentioned, with the stacks coming in from Silent too sexy along with the piercing arrow it, 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 it deletes things along with the cosmic passive rage I, I don't know if you want to be there brother and the hard thing about getting the first two dragons then starting to lose uh, the tempo in the game is a lot of people don't consider it because you're thinking oh two to two drakes right but getting two of the same dragon is already it's statistically so much better. better than getting two varying dragons oh my god the bindings from rage have been so oh, good oh you're hey, just deal. gonna go in onto the cane immediately taken out with the katarina trades one back in advantage oh jung jungler for support uh you know decently this in trade but with nothing on the map currently, except for, except for this Baron, but I don't think you want to do the Baron no, just yet, so. though, especially with Katarina being up, Jinx being up, you know, 1, 2, 6 for the Jinx, but has the Kraken, but slowly building towards that IE, I'm not sure how much gold is in their pocket just yet, but once IE is built, those rocks do so much more damage. Of course, TP is still available for this Renekton, so... Once you see Stretchy in the team fights, I want to see how they play it out, especially with, like you mentioned, Slice and Dice can be such, so crucial, especially with a comp like McKinley's. You know, a lot, very, a lot of frontline units with this Morgana trying to get in there to get the chains on top of everyone. The Yone with the Fate Seal causes a Mordekaiser. So we're actually going to be very useful in these team fights, especially if it's able to get in the middle of everyone or, you know, dash on top of this target with the Barretts once the Black Shield is removed. And if you look on the side of McKinley, it's a very short range comp. The top half of the map is <laughs> three melees. Morgana and Varus have about the same range. Which Morgana's pretty melee at this Not point. even close to Jinx's range. And you look on the side of Baldwin, we have the Call the Meek, an AoE ability in the shape <laughs> of a circle. We have Katarina's ultimate. AoE ability circle. in the shape of Alistair's ultimate. And look at the shape of the Baron Pit. It is just prime time here. But... Assassins! 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 And that's the jungler too! It's a jungler. Flash was blown by this Kha'Zix. It looks like the Baron might be started. Um, interestingly enough, by himself, but trying to uh, make his team come to him. You do see Yone trying to gather the horde in the bot lane, sort of distract them just maybe, but instead we channel the recall. Baron though being taken by this. Rui though, um... Doesn't fishing. land any slow. He's fishing. Yep. Um, no, no bait just yet. Not catching anything on his rod. Now to see what happens. We make a death oh. rocket. Get a little low there, but yeah. a little bit too early, I believe. A little bit more up, and like, maybe like at least two more seconds. Possibility, was here. Possibility. It might have been a try to kill the Kha'Zix angle, but I don't know what oh. resulted from that. That's an opportunity. Oh. I, I don't see that item either a lot. Really? Yeah, I that's, don't see a lot of assassins. That's Senna's first item. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. It's weird. It is weird. It's weird. So anyway, well, I, I won't go into it. All well, once you see a Seno, you can go into it. Yeah, all you need to know is that it is really good for giving Kha'Zix extra lethality. And I believe as soon as you kill somebody, you get extra move speed on top of that. So Yomu's opportunity, very good combination for just poking, getting in, getting out. Genuine assassin. Attack. So you're talking about move speed. I'm talking about attack speed, especially with look at the item, first item built for this all-star. It is a frozen heart. I was trying to summon deny that attack oh, speed. I think the attack speed, Yone gets his, his attack speeding all over this cane. Yes, he is Yone all he's Yone-ing all over the jungle <laughs> right now. Yone. And also That was hard to say. 
it is going to be a Zanya's build for this barracks because they have sort of that dual, you know, AP and AD synergy with their items. A lot of grubs coming out into play. Top lane and mid lane getting pushed on. And Henry, this could be a top push and a mid lane close as well. Yeah, and funnily enough, the support is on pushing duty on the bot side of the map too. A lot slower than everyone else, but you can already see the base is being broken. Somebody has to contest Dark Ghost, but it's not worth pouring more than one person because the Shadow Realm is just going to happen, and he can just take this inhibitor and walk out. Just the threat of the ultimate being available, as we can see the push now much stronger on the mid side. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Yu-Gi-Oh! We know the Shadow Realm is very, very, very. hurtful. And Kaiba you know, is not ready. Kaiba is not ready. You know, you all see the gif when he's like, no, from Exodia. Yeah. So we know how that goes. But now with Ruby going in, you know, he's, he's, every time he's breaking the bone plating of Alistar, that's yes. a feel bad. Yes. That tankiness goes down tremendously when that bone plating is down. So much now. damage with the Rylites. And you mentioned it's your favorite item for, for these characters. Oh. Okay, they're going to try to push onto the Mordekaiser. C sees him before he can even use his ultimate. That is the Katarina ult down though. Oh my god. Three man ultimate. Oh my god. Yone. Is the chain CC going to be enough? The answer so far is going to be yes. The Jinx just chased down. And he's alive. He's barely alive with a little to no HP. Flash away for this all-star. And that fate sealed combination. That has three members. It looked like it was going to be dire with four members on top of him. But he popped off and let Varus do some damage. Katarina's ult is available right now. Exhaust and Flash These too. are the AoE champions. They could look to turn it here. Just watch Rage. If he's able to get a nice binding or a good black shield, can counteract. And Rage is like, you know, screw it. I'm going to try to get some more damage on top of this turret. Rui, though, was trying to back, but Rage wants to fight. Rage is like, I don't care that you guys trying to back. I want to fight still. Yeah, I think they were trying to just use up the remainder of this Baron, but just they expired. were able to get one Nexus turret, so they're going to walk out, spend their cash. They took three There's so many cinders turrets. in this base. They took three inhibitor turrets, the Nexus one, turret, two, and three inhibitors. That's like six cinders around that, in that base, Henry. Yeah. That's a lot of cinders. But I said it'd be a, a double... And Henry, what what is what is the number one curse for you in this game? It's the two Drake. The two Drake curse, and like you mentioned, one of the reasons why the two Drake curse is because you put so much pile in that bot lane that you leave up these grubs, you leave up this herald, which we saw this game how McKinley took advantage of that. They were able to get the six grubs, which let them push more in these turrets. You see, all turrets in this game except for one is left. That's it. Everything else is gone. That is that is a lot of turrets. That's ten turrets so far. And on the reciprocal side of that. McKinley's towers have not fallen yet. Speaking of fallen, um, I think that's going to be a fallen cane there for the five last push potentially for McKinley High School. This would be the game winning moment for this squad. This could be game number one settled right here, right now. Tigers looking for a push. Poking a little bit is the cane, but they don't really need to do anything. They have the six grubs. They just need the pushing power. They've rooted down Cash, who goes in. Fate Seal only going to take one down. Katarina, you've got to enter now. Not going to be able to do anything. That's going to be the death lotus, but it's too little. It's too late. McKinley, they're going to take game one in this best of three finals. Tigers roaring to victory. <laughs> the last second kill because the Cinders. That's amazing That's there. Good. Pretty good game though. Pretty clean gameplay coming in from McKinley though. Able to, you know, play to their strengths. You know, have yes. that top side pressure very early on. Getting these grubs, getting this herald, and the bot lane. Just making sure they stay alive. Especially against this Jinx All-Star combination. Absolutely so. It was a beautiful showing. You could tell at first that it was a little bit wavy. There were advantages in both lanes for both sides. Yep. But... Eventually, the Katarina was not able to snowball that lead. The Kane was not able to take too much of an advantage. And that Kha'Zix just slowly but surely took over that game. Assassins. Yes. You might have went Blue King, but we have the OG Assassin Jungler Kha'Zix. <laughs> yeah, but see, we saw earlier, we saw the Grave target towards this jungler, but they left the Kha'Zix open, so we might see more priority towards this jungler. Maybe even towards the mid lane, the Yone, very strong early oh, yeah. on. Well, especially able to, like, I believe 20 CS at one point, and then it's just uh, growed stronger and stronger. So right Absolutely. now, McKinley, you know, they're the ones currently at HP Esports Arena, so they're the ones that have, technically has the home field advantage. They have the really. home field. Okay. But yeah, 
a, a definitely an amazing game. But, you know, we're going to take a short break while we prep for game number two. And while we're on this break, if you are here at the East, HBU Esports Arena, you know, be sure to check out the Tetris Open Tournament. Like Ed, like Ed and mentioned earlier, you know, it's open for all ages. So if you want an opportunity to win some prizes from Tetris, so check it out. I believe it is in the back room over there. You can also you know, play it on your phone. Play it on your phone as well, Tetris.com. And just make sure you show, I believe there is a table in the back as well right for Vanta. There. You just go up there, tell them your score, what your name is, and you're able to do some prizes if you get the top two today. So check it out. But we'll be right back with more Hawaii Esports League Spring 24 Championship Finals. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Hawaii Esports League Spring 24 Championship Finals here at the HPU Esports Arena. We saw Game 1 McKinley High School. Pretty, a pretty well thought out victory against Baldwin High School. But yes. that was just game number one. It is a best of three. So now, we'll see how Baldwin can counteract that or if it'll be a 2 0 sweep by McKinley. Yeah, and they're already making the decision. We have information that their sides have been swapped. Baldwin will now be on that blue side. They think that first pick priority is just so valuable. <coughs> and honestly, we it, it wasn't a typical B1 pick that we saw coming out from McKinley. It was no. a Morgana. But I would say the Morgana did pay dividends. You could see the that Alistair was a very was just, aggressive Morgana. Yeah, the the Alistair was just unable to do anything in yeah. lane, which is what you 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 attested to the Morgana poke, the Morgana pressure, right? The mm -hmm. range versus melee support matchup. So I want to see what Baldwin are going to do with this priority pick now because they do lose the counter pick on R five now by going blue side. Yeah, that that is a fact. And counter counter pick, like you mentioned, is a really good one, especially in the top lane, mid lane, what you want to do for your like hyper carries potentially. So we'll see what McKinley has to play out. And of course, right now as well with the overall semifinals, McKinley versus Roosevelt. Currently it is 1-1 one, one at the moment. You see behind us oh, wow. all, all the McKinley fans and students. You know, they're very tense watching pretty much both games happen for McKinley. Absolutely. I mean, we know about the middle school dominance that always happens in that scene. McKinley could look to do a little bit of that today. Yeah, and actually, speaking of which, for the uh, middle school side, yesterday in the middle school portion for League of Legends, it was an Evan Mackay blowout. Evan Mackay Middle School, of course, the, the grand final, the, the, they won it all, and they also these finalists as well. So back, you know, Evan Mackay versus Evan Mackay, it was a scrim battle pretty much. Oh, it, it was, was an in-house. In it was an in-house. Yes. Yeah, it was an in-house. It is. <laughs> Evan Mackay won, Evan Mackay lost. So they have a 50% win rate. They do 50% win rate in the finals. That is a fact. That is That sounds like like the worst version of the Prisoner's the Dilemma I've ever heard. Yeah, they won a lot. You I, play I, yourself, so you have to lose and win. I think they won Smash singles as well. So they won a decent wow. amount yesterday. Yeah. Okay. They're okay. in a lot of finals and semifinals. So Makai doing a good job and see if McKinley will be, uh, you know, imitate that success, but you know, in the high school portion, you know, winning right. a lot of finals. So, you know, they're trying to do it for Overwatch right now, see if they make it to the finals. The question is, what are they going to do against Roosevelt? You know, we have to wait and see. Yeah, the sooner one is going to be this League of Legends match that we have on yep. our stream right now. Baldwin is standing in their way. Baldwin does have the potential to still win this. It would take a reverse sweep of the next two games in order for them to take this title out of the Tigers' hands. But we're going to have to see, right? Draft, I feel like, played such a big role. It was a lot of champions that we weren't expecting to see. Yeah. The Katarina, the Yone, the Kane, the Kha'Zix, a lot of... A lot of variety, I would say, in the roles that we expected yeah. the variety to be in. So we're going to have to see. I think, yeah, Jinx Alistair <coughs> on paper, really good matchup. Really good matchup. Just absolutely stifled. So hopefully, I don't know if Baldwin have a second rendition ready for us in that bot lane, but... I think if Jinx Alistair were to work, you're going to have to ban out a little bit more of the yeah. counters. Yeah, ban out something that, that can you know negate the engage potential from your squad, especially with, like I like mentioned, Alistar. If, if you're stopped early on in the Hellbot Pulverize combination, that's all you're pretty much useful for in these team fights. Hellbot Pulverize, and a lot of times it was negated by either, you know, the slows coming in from the Yone, from the Kha'Zix, or the binding coming in from... Or you were just poked out. That too, and it happened a decent amount, especially against these champions, the Yone, Varus. They were able to poke you out so, so fast. We then see, you know, once we do get into this track, like you mentioned, Blue side for Baldwin, red side for McKinley. Yeah. The side selection is always in favor of the loser side. We've been seeing a lot of blue side priority. It's kind of the, the staple oh that's god, been happening. Oh my god, I'm so surprised. Blue side oh prior. Oh my goodness, wow. Blue, blue side, side wins, Kek W. <laughs> <laughs> but we, it's not like saying red side hasn't won before. We've obviously, you know, blue side is just more favored, but I think it's always been sort of like a 55-45 split in favor of blue. So we're going to have to see... 
if the blue does take it. Oh, advantage. we have names. We do have names. The correct names. Yeah, and looks like there's a sub or a swap as well. The jungler from McKinley Z will be going over to the top side while Solomon. We'll call him Solomon. Solomon in the jungle now. I was about to read it as Solomon C D, and I was about to lead into a segue that. Oh, it's only for the young kids. It's only for the young kids, not for you. Yasuo will band out, Yoni band out, the brothers going to be taken uh, off the table immediately. Ah, uh, yes, the the, uh, the Wind Brothers in TFT, the iconic duo. Oh my goodness. Remember when they were exiles trade? Uh -huh. oh. Anyway, a more Yordle band, so it looks like uh, McKinnon does not like Yordles. That is some uh, Yordleism. I think they were the ones that banned the Kled last time, too. Yeah, they, so... they just don't like Yordles. I don't know. Uh, SMH my head, I, I think don't know. I think Santa's not a Yordle. If cool. they ban Santa, I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> But anyway, the Jaxby battle. So a lot of top mid focus coming in from Baldwin trying to target the soul laners of McKinley. Especially Z now going over to the top side. We're not sure what their pull is, but what the, how they play Cosmic last game. You can tell they're a very aggressive, very powerful, you know, 1v1er. And, and it's all about 1v1 in that top side of the map. And I'm surprised they got left up just because I think, oh, like, oh Z moved to the top side. It's whatever. But this Skarner hover and it's going to be locked in. So let's talk a little bit about the Skarner rework since that's happened. Um, he goes through walls. Mm -hmm. He throws rocks. Uh huh. And his ult hits three people. Yes, but it, three people. it is a very slow um, channel. Channel. So if you're smart enough, you're able to, or quick enough, you're able to do it. But with a black ship coming into play, that is something that can counteract that very well. Thought. So if you use on a key target like, you know, your AD carry, like your jungler who's hovering a lot of the cool things, Nunu, Karthus. It's Nunu. All right. We're, 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 who's who's faster, Rift Herald or Nunu? I think Nunu. You think Nunu? By far. By far? Okay. Got it. Oh. oh. Is oh. it happening? Is it happening? Is it happening? Or, or, or is Draftlow just messing with us? Our observer, I just want you to know, this R3 hover ban was, was a Senna earlier. And then I saw him make eye contact with me. <laughs> he made sure I watched. <gasps> it's locked in. Ooh. Ooh. So they locked in the top side. So very. So it's, very, it's about the movement speed pretty much. This is this is very different from game number one because if you remember the game number one draft, it was both wide laners, both mid laners, and then oh my god, it's locked in the map. But now we're just seeing an absolute mix of things: both junglers, one top laner, both supports, and yes, you saw it. A Zed. Zed. In. What season are we in? How old are you? Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, buddy. By the way, Zed, though, this is like, looking like, like a season four, comp season three composition. Yeah, you Zed, would... Morgana, Nunu, and against the Skarner, Kled, and Leona. Like you mentioned, Leona, um, able to go in a lot more easier to get in there compared to the All-Star with the help of Hoverize. You know, you have the Zenith Blade, and he's a stun, and especially if you're in a bush waiting, the sudden, you know, Solar Flare with the in in instant Zenith Blade can be so deadly from Leona. I'm curious what Zed build we're going to see. Oh, true. Because we've seen the jungle Zed rendition of it, yeah. where you kind of build a little bit tankier with Gore Drinker and you're just a little bit more sustainy. But I'm thinking it's going to be an Assassin Zed. It more might circles. be a little bit more difficult just because... Think about how tanky Baldwin's yeah. comp already yeah, very is. Tanky. And we already see a Jinx band out, the Katarina, Varus, and Mordecai. So a lot of targets from that previous game while Swain locked in. So another circle champion Love for circles. this squad. You, you have the Nunu, you have the Morgana, and you have the Swain now. No circles. I technically the W has a circle around him Yeah. for Zed. And anyway, the Malignants. 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 They heard us preaching heard the us. item, and they were like, we're going to build this because it's super broken. And then last bit, I mean, and of course, rounding it out would be that Jace for them. Not sure if that's going to be... That I is, think that's top Jace. Top Jace with Swain and Morgana bot Swain and Morgana bot. Yeah, so we talked about this last game. Huh. There's no MR sub rune. Magic damage does so much more than you currently think. And if you're going to be playing it into somebody like this Kaisa, like this Leona, Kaisa's only movement ability pre six is that walk a little faster. You know, like the like the like the Ajuma pacing type of thing. So it's not going to be very easy to dodge the Swain pull, and. Swain pull, more Q, that CC chain landing. If this is an ignite on either the Morgana or the Swain, this could be a very deadly combination on the side of McKinley. That being said, I really, really like Baldwin's composition once we exit the laning phase and start heading into those skirmishes and those team fights because they have so much good team fight potential. They have the multi men, um, uh, what's it called? Drag coming mm -hmm. in from the Skarner that we mentioned. They have 
the Solar Flare coming out mm -hmm. from the Leona. And, of course, the Kassadin is just going to Malignant's all over Summoner's Rift. We're just going to have to see how that works out for them. As here we are loading into game number two. Game two. Let's see what happens here, really. I'm not too sure. But now, as we get into it, let's see what will happen. And now, looking into this with wait and see. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Let's yep, see. This is going to be game number two right here. And no, again, no funny business going on. Everybody's just going to be playing it pretty safely. Nobody's going to be going for any wards or anything like that either. So this is just going to be your, your typical game start here. It's not going to be anything in the peculiar sense. The Nunu is doing the, the Nunu thing, you know, the, the head shake. They're, wa they're, they're whipping it out. And just a little bit of dancing. Wait, and he lane. beatboxes now. So he can beatbox if he wants to. Right, Scarter does beatbox. Oh. Fun yeah, fun fact. Does he still do the Pokemon thing? Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen that. I don't hear it. He oh. just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, he, that's what he does. Sad. Oh, okay. Raydrax on the aggression did ward the red. SMH my head, bro. He, you know, he does that to, to the dancing Skarner. As you see, <laughs> Kled and Scar also dancing against uh, Z, who. Yes. Wh what does his name stand for again? Um, he told me something. It's like it was beautiful the first time we met, or something. W W Riz. W W Riz. That's what I said. W Riz, man. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Rage. He, he's doing rage things. Yeah. Doing rage things. Okay, we got some fist bump action going on on the side of McKinley very early. Nunu opted not to buy a potion with the with the initial 500 gold. I think it's because you do have pretty good sustain as yeah. a Nunu, so long as you're not invaded, and even if you are, you are going to stay relatively healthy. Yeah, I mean that is very very common for a lot of these junglers nowadays. So smart, so you have more. Uh, that 50 extra gold to buy something else later on. Oh yeah, hitting that initial. Item component purchase. We saw it earlier, right, with the serrated dirks on both sides, and it just propelled it clear so much faster. Unfortunately, the the downside to playing Kled is this range versus melee matchup that you have to do in the Jace. You can see right now Kled with literally zero CS to his name as the wave is getting pushed in. This Jace is about to hit level three on top of that. Fortunately for him, diving a Kled is a very bad idea. So that's very good as the biggest snowball ever is going to be formed right here by Solomon. Flash forward Ooh. from Rager, going to have to answer on the side of Cloud. Kaisa not going to get tagged by the snowball. Instead, it's going to be the Leona, who's not very tanky at level 2, is going to survive Ignite. the Ignite, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Has the, has the pot. Didn't even any of the pots either, so still having all those pots available. And yeah, just a lot of summoner spells blown in that bot lane. You know, Clown, Rainer's Flash, make sure it doesn't, they get knocked up by Solomon. Of course, we know Clown ourselves, you know, are currently a replay odds. Not spelled the same way, though. Or, sorry, not, not the same characters, sorry. Yeah, I was originally saying, this is, without the X's, backwards is a C-L-V-N. And I was thinking his name was, like, Calvin or something like Oh, that. it might be Calvin, actually. Yeah. It might be Calvin, not sure. Hold on, try hard. This evades the wall. Tries to help out his his top laner here. Flash oh, for flash. My God. Actually, beautiful response. And Cassidy's not going to be able to join up in any way, shape, or form. And speaking of the Cassidy, going to get nailed <laughs> by the snowball. He's at the flash Bit this. By Solomon. Is it going to be enough? The magic shield flash in response. Woo -hoo -hoo! And he's still alive. And but he makes it out. Tryhard will not go in further. Possibly could. Imagine he just flashes, throws a, a rock at him. And oh, it seems like. Potentially might be going to draw as well for Overwatch for McKinley versus Roosevelt. Wow. That, you don't see that every day. You don't. You, you don't. don't. But now, top lane though, with, with a lot of Summer blown, be very dangerous to either of these top laners. Cash already forced off of Scarl. As a, this is a big wave for Z, so Z has to be careful because he just has to fight Cash here. He might die to some of these minions. Yeah, and keep in mind, Skarner can just completely ignore that wall. This could be a dive coming oh, in. Oh, yeah, top Solomon lane. Solomon smells something fishy. It's going to be a miss from the Skarner, but are they going to be able to do anything? Oh! <laughs> That's the rock! He's rock solid, baby. The Skarner comes back. Dwayne Johnson strikes again. 
Yeah, you know, you know he, he lost a WrestleMania, or he won a WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know that. Yeah. And thank you. Yeah. I guess. I mean, he hasn't wrestled in like what ten years, so yeah, that's pretty impressive. Anyway, back to this game though. Uh, we see the tier for the cast along the Dark Seal. So. A lot of stacks coming in for this cast, so we have to keep a track on that one, see how that plays out for him as the game comes on. While the Ioni boots a lucidity for Rui, so especially with the W, you know, Q spam from Zed, we all know how that goes. Yeah, and one of the purchases that I want to point out that we don't see very common is actually this coal purchase coming out from the Kaisa, just for the fact that Typically, if you're fighting ADC versus ADC, you want to hit your Noon Quiver as soon as possible, or you want to hit your Pickaxe as soon as possible, because those item specs are just so strong. But because you're fighting Double Mage, there isn't really that much of a kill threat, so long as no type of CC lands. You already do have the Cleanse in tow for whenever you need it, so this Kai'Sa opting in for the call, but Solomon's going to want to try to do something Come about to. it. It's going to land onto this Kai'Sa. That's the, That's the chain CC. Glenn is, is going to get him out oh, of, the of, the rage. of the pool. Rager just a little bit too far. Proxy Ignite onto Calvin. Not sure if that's going to be enough. Going to go forward with the Ghost Flash. Traded one for one. And that's what you kind of like to see if you're on the side of it. Well, actually, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either, but top lane, you see Cash going in on top of Z yet again. Z, though, with the ultimate. Z, actually, no, wait, it's, it's a Jace. Ultimate doesn't matter. Anyway, Force to get away. This minion's on a mission. Minion is on, yeah, he's on Mission Impossible right now, but it stops the minion with pushing just a little bit. As on the other side, I believe it is a best of three for the semifinals, and it looks like McKinley did win 2-1 versus Roosevelt, so they'll be moving on to the finals in the Overwatch later today. Okay, so now they have two opportunities. Two opportunities, so what's he gonna do? Countries. But as we see, McKinley's mid laner, Rui, doing a lot. Oh, oh, they're going in! Assassins! That's enough, the Deathmark is gonna claim it. I don't even think the Deathmark kicked in. I think that was just some shurikens from the side. But all yeah. right, all right, all right. That's going to be a kill. And that's going to be another one in the name. In the McKinley column, I should say. In the McKinley column in the Solomon, though. On top of that, Dragon, we saw last game, Red Side prioritizing the bot lane, prioritizing the Dragon. The last time, that was Baldwin. Yes. And now, Baldwin. And now Baldwin, they're on the, on the crux. They're, they're on, on the, the uh, what do we call the them? Grubs. The what do we The Wee Bear Bears. Wee Bear Bears. Wee Bear Bears. Yes. What are their names? I don't know. I think they're just named after what they are. Like one of them Panda, Panda one of them's Grizzly, one of them's Ice Bear, Grizzly. Ice Bear. I know oh, that one. Oh. I also know another one. Of course our re or of course our production team knows what their names are. No, he he's Google. Oh, he's Google. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, but but grubs are taken. 3 now in Baldwin's hands, which is really good because again, you only need that one extra to summon that grub um void might. And uh, we see both mid laners now. They're starting to push out their lanes. They want to impact these side lanes as much as possible because as you can see, the action is really just on the sides right now. The ganks have been prioritizing top and on that bottom. We had the initial little bit with the new to first blood in the mid lane, but <laughs> since then, not a lot of mid lane action. Yeah, it's new to going consistently towards that bot side, top side right now we see Cash and Z duking out and we see Z using the range to their advantage, already almost a 30 CS lead and still poking Cash out of this, out of this lane consistently Ooh. getting rid of Skarl. So this is actually very dangerous for the side of Cash because if you're if you're at a long range distance and you're dismounted, you're pretty much useless but hold yeah. on, Tyhard's gonna try to make a play out of it. Just gonna use it to zone. Oh my god. Ow. That's a lot of poke damage coming in from Z though. Very beautiful poke, if you will. Yeah, with the bone plating now down. Uh -huh. That's gonna be really hard to sustain here as the Kled. Oh, and speaking of, you said Nunu going down mid lane. Nunu's back in the mid lane. Snowball does not land. Oh, played around the turret beautifully there. That was a good dodge. Good dodge good indeed. Dodge. Look, but see? No, no let's keep though coming in from this. As the Swain bot lane. Using the R twice to do the damage, didn't land on anyone just yet, so it did look like nothing was blown actually by the bot lane of oh. Baldwin, but it's some nice poke, a root in place, more damage, flash going in, and it's Major, one for one the raid. Yes, it will. You want top lane? I don't think you understand. That cleanse was on three seconds. Oh, that's that, that's silty. Me want top lane. Um, Jace kills oh, one and mid lane. Oh. Okay, everything's off screen, sadly. Observer moment. Yeah. Can I fault him for that? No. <laughs> Cause, <laughs> cause... 
Yeah, it happens, especially with a game like League of Legends. It gets so chaotic, especially with champions like Jace, like Clyde, like Cass, and like Zed. At any moment, they could go all in. Yeah, I mean, we just saw it. We just saw yeah, Oh, well, well, we didn't see it. What do you mean? Oh, right. We, we didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, that's best, speaking of which, though, 0 3 0 on this cast is still stacking up on the tier. Not stacking up on the dark chest. That's a, that's a different story. But anyway, um, look at the item built up in first wing. Yeah. 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 I don't like that item. Good talk. Same yeah. time next week? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, actually, I won't be here next week. Sorry. I think it's a good idea. Because you yeah. already knew that the Kassin was going to go Malignance. There's just so no... So here with your own Malignance. But here's the thing. Malignance procs on, a, on an interval timer. Like, there's an internal clock for it or there's cooldown. But every enemy champion in the range of your ultimate when Malignance procs... Mix another pool. Oh, uh, that's disgusting. Which is why Cassidy is so good, because if you are onto three people, it summons three pools of malignance and that damage over Oh, uh, here other. comes the Kled, dodges the that's abilities. It. But the C still lands on the snowball. That was not as far as they wanted it to go. Nope. Um, Circles. Yeah. Oh, but here comes Try Hard. Okay, gonna go through the wall. Not see if they can find enough it. It's a little too far, yeah. The lanes are just a bit too wide, but Zayna Flame gonna go in. Solar Flare on top of it, chooses oh, the, the shield. magic shield out the swain. Is it gonna be enough sustain? That's gonna be the ultimate being used. The Jace oh teleports my God. in. The, the never move on to Kelvin. Kaisa's got nowhere to go. And if you thought this swain wasn't ahead enough, if you thought this Jace wasn't ahead enough, try hard. Going to be the third casualty, <laughs> but the suppress. <laughs> He should be fine still with some yeah, sustain coming out on the minions. Ghost going in as well to survive. Meanwhile, Rui still mid lane pushing in. Has about, a, you know, a two wave lead over B BQ. And BQ knows that Zed Rui can all in him at half health with the electrocute, with the ultimate. Shuriken's land ulting in I'm now. getting deja vu, bro. It's happening one more time. But the death oh. mark is not going to be up this time. He needs more lethality. Yes. Needs more lethality there. Top lane, you do see Cash still pushing in. Is this your is this your master chef analysis? Yes. You like you like Chef's kiss. Needs more lethality. Needs more lethality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna talk a little bit more about. Oh, hold on. Oh. The supports though. Yeah, support support of combat. Uh, clowns. He's not, he's not respecting the support of combat here. Yeah, Rager does not believe in restraining orders. Uh, no, no, what do you mean? The enemy team has a training order on him at yeah, this point. Yeah, and he does not believe in it. Yeah. And also, I want to point out, Kai, look at Kaisa. Look at the rune they have. Oh, yeah. They have the, the POTS one. I forget what it's called. Oh, the elixir. Yes. No. I and speaking of which, um, Wu Bear Bear is getting taken again by this opposition. It should be five oh, going this into it. Garner is going to get spotted out here, and the Kled is in no position to kind of help out. Yeah, but even then, I don't think that Jays can walk up to it. He has to be very careful. Zed is walking up, though, to help him out. So that at least, that's not the full six to get that double grub, but bot lane, um, Oh! Yeah. They just used the health bars, but the wave's not entirely pushed in yet, so Swain tanked another turret shot. I don't know if they're confident enough to go for this. I they're mean, gonna try. The CC does land. Wait, he's gonna yank him out of the middle. Oh, he's inting his teammate. Silas too sexy. He cannot take another shot. The stun. Times times nine report the swing. Times nine report. Um. Anyway, top lane. Um. No suppressors available if you want to do it. But instead, that is gonna be six grubs. Yeah, Rui has the, the mark available. Oh, the cheeky ultimate here. It is going to land. Hearthstone's going to proc. Oh. That's going to be enough turret shots, too. Rui Z is going to clean up. That's going to be the TP coming in from the Cassidy, I believe. No, Malignant's just yet, though. Should be fine. A lot of pings coming in. I'm pretty sure that the ping sounds are Nunu pinging the Swain. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, it's probably Nunu pinging Swain. That was what I would do, if anything. It's fine. it's fine. I don't think you understand how far that W goes right now. It is. It will not reach mid lanes from where he is. So um, that is that's totally fine. It doesn't really matter for the time being. But I will say that now we do have the same uh, situation we had last game, where we have Baldwin with the six rubs and we have McKinley with the first two dragons, Hextech and Infernal. A pretty good pairing of in, uh, individual dragons, I would say. But, uh, again, if you look on the side of Baldwin, 
they are just absolutely begging to stack Mountain Dragons. I'm begging indeed. Let's see what happens this game, though. 4 0 1 for the Zed, 3 0 3 for this Swain. Who's gonna die first? Or if he, either of them do die? For the Zed or the Swain? Oh, yeah. the, the Deathless. The Deathless the ones, yes. It's Zed. It's Zed. You're calling Zed. You're calling Rui, okay. And it might happen right here on the top side with the Rift Herald fight. Cash already pretty low. Interrupted the uh, Violent Tendencies, oh, and it's just gonna get taken out right out of the bat. Tryhard has to just evade out of the situation, and the Rift Herald does get reset. Oh, the chain is going the in. The chain's double landing, so not good in terms of the CC, but Tryhard not in the right place at the right time. Calvin now has to run away from the Swain. Very unlucky. Big Hugh going to try to blink away. The silence isn't going to be enough. No. Oh, Swain will soon win the fight. Okay. At, at this point, our Zerg is going to zoom out to the whole map to show everything happening because there's so much fighting everywhere. Yeah. Then he just going to continue to zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Yeah. Anyway, look, Harold again. And, and now we can see the new new versus Harold race if we wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this is the first thing that is different from game number one. Which True. is the fact that the six grub team did not get the Rift Herald. So we're gonna have to see how this works out because I think this was pretty much the exact same situation in terms of turrets. Where McKinley finished the entire outer ring or they were close enough to falling that it wasn't worth investing in Rift Herald before. Yeah. So I'm not sure where they're going to be putting that per se. But Nunu does get that faster back. Yeah, and now let's take a look at the items real fast. So far, we see the Eclipse coming in for the Kled. But the, the, his counterpart, Jace, 60 CS lead for him. The more mana along with the Yomu's Ghost Blade. So, we talk about Lethality. There's Lethality right there. Oh, yeah. You know, Rage is doing Rage things and just invading by himself against his opposition. Oh, <laughs> forcing the smite from... Yeah. <laughs> this Morgana, I give them props. The Morgana W damage on low health mo uh, jungle camps, you cannot, like, 50 50 that. Oh. I hear the Kled ult. I don't <gasps> see it going. Scarl anywhere. got popped before, I, I think. Yes. Scar got popped while the ult happened, so Scar disappeared. Meanwhile, that's going mid? Oh. It's going mid. So that should not deter it completely. Is he gonna knock out the Cassidy too? Wait, oh, he knocked the Cassidy! He predicted the, the ultimate! Oh, and Rage took the kill. No, it's fine because now they take a turret, they get a second charge. That was crazy. On the Rift I think it was to prioritize knocking up the Cassidy, and it just ended up being a very good zone. And they just keep on going further. Not as much grubs though, just because they didn't get any grubs taken. Ultimate is available for Try Hard. Oh, it a Nunu. the Nunu ult. It's either play, not going to land, Solar Flare, not going to be invested. Actually, it was already used, so there's no more abilities to try to go and capitalize on oh, this. Oh, so they didn't practice the minions, and the mid turret fell. Bot lane swings to push, it's actually be the bot outer falling. That's a lot of gold immediately coming to the pocket of McKinley High School. Meanwhile, Z is hiding in a bush. He's, he is hide up, he is faker. Yeah, I think he's just trying to dwindle down the wave. Oh, just to. Uh, oh. Let's see what happens here. Oh, Scar is not in the right place at the He's right not. time right about now. He's rooted. That's going to be grabbed. Stunned. Uh, Quick, Cat name all the CCs. Yes. Yeah, suppressed, stunned, etc. Dead. Not Polymorph. Yeah, not Polymorph. Not Polymorph. Uh, Polymorph is OP. <laughs> he stunned the bush. He did solo kill Cash. Cash, he no flash. He claimed one. He did claim one. He did. He did. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, we do see the... the Third Drake, we didn't see this last time around, you like to mention, there was a two Drake into the other team getting two Drakes. Now, third Drake going over to... M third Drake going over to McKinley. Um, um, at this will be Pink Flash on Solomon. I, I can hear that. I do hear the pings. I do hear the pings. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if it's his I, team or the other team. I don't know if Solomon realized that the jungler was already dead. Shh, it's okay. It's okay. Neither... His team knew, at least. But we'll move on. We'll move on. We'll, uh, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt yeah. and say that, um, you know, that he did his best. He did his best indeed. Leandri's, by the way, fully built up for this Nunu. Not just the Nunu. That's a three of a kind of Leandri's. That is a lot of damage so, over So, time. if you're playing Bellatro, how, how much, how many points would that give you? It's not, it's not a lot. It's not a lot? It's okay. But what if he has, like, the bonuses to the effect? It's not a lot. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, I gotta talk to Colton about that. I don't think we've, I don't think either of us have had a three-of-a-kind run. But anyway. Really? 
McKinley are definitely going for it right now with the triple Leandries. <laughs> I don't think they realize how much the Leandries, the Malignants, and the Zazax is going to do. This bot lane is really capitalizing on the fact that you should have built MR. Um, he, speaking of MR, it is silence. He's sexy on the Swain. Using Nevermore. And now, isn't he a lot of poke damage? And Blue comes in. Yeah, and the thing about the Zenith Blade is yeah, there's <gasps> only one way in, there's no way out. He's and sitting. this Fiona <laughs> is in deep waters right about now. This Silas ult is going forever. Call it a Ramatra roleplay, if you will. Oh, boo. No one likes Ramatra. Anyway, oh. as we. See Let's hope none of those. Uh, I'll wait to see if they locked in the Ramacha. I'll be like, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, look at that. Yeah, like you mentioned, once you go, once you can get out. And even then, uh, Kiri got hit up by everything. The Solar it got hit up by the Morgana root, the Ultimate, Swain root, uh, the Nunu Snowball, the Poke from Z. A little bit of everything. Yeah, and now that we got to see the second item for this Kaisa, it is going to be the LS build. Uh, the one where you poke with your W, it's it's the A round one, basically. Yep, Mr. Last Shadow uh, himself. It's hard to make that work, but it is good poke, which is probably what you need right now heading into this fight. Jace is going to flash him out. Rager Axe just going to flash into four people. Cash at minimal health bars. Is he's just going to get to the skies onto. <laughs> Absolutely right. Z is going to also live. That was Leandre's burn, I think. Yep, and that's already two kills, and oh, oh my god! Okay, Rajax is gonna fall, that's gonna be the Swain old proc one more time. Try hard, run, like, try hard, I run! no idea what I'm supposed to do here. He's waddling, he's trying to do something, a little poke coming from from uh, Z yet again, and yeah, th that Scorpion should get the heck out of there. Oh yeah. Unless he wants to be the next entree at some Chinese restaurant, he should leave. Anyway, oh, but here comes Kaisa going in and oh, Cloud, I don't think I'll do that, buddy. You're almost dead as Z's falling, Z's rock. falling. Throw He's the running. Rock. The Rock yes. claims him. And that was a rock bottom as the shutdown goes over to this Garner. We take those. We take those. Shutdown. Yeah. Still deathless, by the way, for this Zed and uh, Swain. Yeah, what if neither of us are right? And then m m go for McKinley. I don't, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Look. But yeah, Baldwin, though, down a lot. Down 14 kills. Down 11k in gold. Like we mentioned, this is game two of a best of three. So if Baldwin loses, McKinley will be your grand champion, at least for the spring 24 semester. And McKinley, you know, they like those odds already, but I'm not sure if they like these odds at the moment. Yep, Razor Axe once again going for the Black Shield onto the Nunu. Not fully built, but is going to take out the He's still alive! Cavalry has arrived. Razor Axe landing another beautiful stun. That's going to be two already in favor, and it looks like nobody's going to Rage is fall. alive! Big Q's not going to be able to find the Morgana, and just a beautiful dissection of a team fight here from the side of the Tigers. And that might just be game. What just happened? That's a clean ace. Rage got caught up by three members, and he lived for so dang long. Like, what? I, I, I'm speechless. I don't even think he has lasagnas. I he doesn't. He just has damage. He, he just walked around. Well, but he had a stasis, but oh. he still was able to survive for so dang long. Like, he's like, okay, well, I'm Morgana. I do Morgana things, I guess. I stay alive with the puddle, do my work, stun them up a little bit, and easy peasy lemon squeezy. Who needs 200 years of champion design when you can walk around? Hey, that, that, that's my OG season one champion right there. Season one. I hope you real. There was League of Legends yet. Oh no, there wasn't League of Legends yesterday. I don't remember. I wasn't. There was. We. I didn't. Was on broadcast. Like I said, Makai won it all. I don't think the people that competed yesterday stop. Were alive in season. Stop. One. Please, you're not wrong. Please stop. I feel old already. But speaking of which, you see Z in a little bit predicament here. He's gonna poke him out. As it is in the Mountain Soul, Skarner. He's got the jungle. It's the fresh. Scorpion Hail for McKinley. I don't think that tastes good. I don't think it tastes good either, but it's, but, exo it's exotic. But the Tigers definitely like that. Tigers probably do like that. As we're going to get the charge. It's going to hit nothing. But it is 2v1 right now. A little bit of 3v1, but look who it is. It's, but it's Rage. Rage Axe. It's Rage Axe. Of yeah. course it is. This kid has no chill. He, he wants to fight, fight, fight. 
This guy's ready for the LPL. <laughs> Solomon's going in, lands two-man snowball. That's going to be everybody just flashing forward. They know that the game's in their hands. They know that they could close it out right here. 25 minutes. We called oh. it at the beginning of the day. Yeah. They're going to try to hold as best as they possibly can. That's another root landing Z just in by the Nexus already. He's just trying to end. That is an uh, that is a normal uh a Q normal Q. Coming yeah. out from the chase, and it still does half of the Kaisa's health bar. 5v2 left standing, Molten. and all we have is Get like, Rager, do it. <laughs> all we Eat. have is a poke Kaisa left standing. I don't think it's going to be enough. And the Scorpion. The Rock, look at the damage. He's dead, Rui. No ultimate is going to be used. That's going to be it. Second Nexus Tower falls, and McKinley, they're going to win the Spring 2024 League of Legends Finals here. Yep, they are your champions. There they are. They win it all over Baldwin 2 nothing. Very clean performance. I feel like their game one, we saw it was a little iffy in the beginning of game one, and then they started taking over, and they just never let go of that momentum. No brakes. They just cut the brake pedals. Only gas. Yes. Especially the Nunu. Just running it everywhere. Nunu was everywhere in this game, honestly. Good. Do you want to point out the Nunu? The Morgana. Okay, yeah, yeah, like we said, Ranger has no chill. They just want to fight every everything and everyone. They had someone to be. Yeah, he had someone to be. You know, he probably plays fighting games too. He probably plays like Street Fighter or something, you know. We should ask fighting. him later. Yeah, we should probably ask him, yeah. But anyway, a very good gameplay from McKinley overall, showing their worth, you know, winning the, getting their first title of the day. Like we mentioned, McKinley. Second they, they, opportunity. They have an opportunity later today. They have to play in the Overwatch final. We're not sure who their opponent is just yet. I do believe the other time I fought, it'll be starting momentarily on the side. Looks like they're starting Lijong Tower first. That's your favorite map. That is my favorite map. Yeah, Lijong Tower. But anyway, props <laughs> to McKinley. They did very, very well today. Excellent showing for them. And I believe, yeah, like we said, first league title for them? I'm not 100 percent too sure just yet. We might have to confer later on. Well, with... regardless, they got they're today. now the top dogs. They're the top dogs right? in D so... for Spring 24. For 24 in general, we'll see if they can emulate it in Fall 24 later on. Exactly. They're going to be the ones who have to now defend their title. So props to them. Excellent showing. And yeah, yeah. overall great. Overall great gameplay from McKinley High School. Their first title of the day. Many more to come, hopefully. But but besides that, we'll take a break before we do go to our next finals, which will be the Rocket League finals. Have a good one. We'll see you soon. And make, like we mentioned, check out the Tetris area if you are here in the HP Esports Arena. Get some prizes later on. But anyway, see you guys soon. We'll be right back. All right, and now we're going to present the runner-up for the League of Legends tournament, Baldwin High School. Now, they were playing remote, but still played well, put up a good fight. And so we'll be sure to ship this trophy over to them. And now to present the championship trophy, give it up for McKinley High School. <laughs> this is your trophy, guys. Take it, take it in. Again, give it up for your champions, the Kinley High School. An absolutely exciting matchup here, and I had the privilege of being front row seat for it. So now I'm joining me are your current Spring 2024 League of Legends champions, McKinley High School. And might I just say, I just wanted to congratulate you guys again. And I know for people out there that's probably tired of hearing me say this, but it's been an honor just to even be a part of um, McKinley High School. I, I'm a pr uh, proud alumni myself. So um, I just kind of wanted to know, I know you guys are probably very, very excited just coming fresh off of your victory. But I kind of got to I kind of got to know a little bit about um, how do you guys maintain the pressure? Or how do you guys navigate um, handling the pressure of representing your school for the esports tournament? We just try to have like fun and like, uh, with our team have like, really good fun or else it'll be like boring you know so we just have fun a lot during our 
regular matches and like championships. In a game like League, of course, you guys need to um, have um, a high sense of environmental awareness as well as a reliance on individual and team-based skills. So uh, during gameplays, how do you guys balance individual skill development as well as team cohesion? Uh, we try to place uh, people where they usually are. Like if um, my teammates play like top, we will try to place them top. But then if we have to, we will switch them around. But then we usually try to keep them around in their same position. It'll be like it'll be good for the team. Uh, where do you see uh, the McKinley High School esports from here on now, and how do you guys hope to promote uh, esports within the school? I hope that this championship uh, will like let the esports at our school grow, because after we leave, uh, hopefully there will be more people coming in. All right, all right. Thank you guys so much again, and once again, congratulations, go Tigers!